Day four just came to a close here in Clearwater. Only two games today, but two very important ones. Both were elimination games. Memphis and USF got it started this afternoon, fighting to stay alive to take on Houston tomorrow. The Tigers trailed by one run through five innings and then took the lead in one of the most unusual plays we've seen all year. Tucker Tubbs led off the inning, hitting his league-leading 17th home run of the season into the left field bullpen to tie it. Then things got crazy. Uh, I also have no idea. Uh, T's made a real good play at shortstop, and I was expecting him to throw it to me. Next thing we know, I look up, Carter's in a pickle. So I went over there and took second, and then Carter got tagged out. No one was coming third. Everyone's just in the huddle. So I took third, and then the catcher was out there in the huddle arguing, and then I just went ahead and took home. And we've seen Brandon do that in the recruiting process. You know, and it, it just, that's just how he plays the game. He's always playing the game hard. Uh, he looks for moments like that. And, and uh, you know, I think once he got third, then he kind of started getting that gritty feeling like if, you know, no timeout was called, let's see what happens. And he saw a catcher vacate. So it was a, definitely a momentum shift play. Uh, really, really baseball smart. And, uh, you know, you really can't teach that. So that was, that was awesome. That was a game changer. Dylan Toscano got the start on the mound today for the Tigers. Pitching an impressive outing. Eight innings, five strikeouts, and only giving up one run. Early, I was getting tired. I mean, I was, uh, I walked a couple leadoff guys, got a couple lead off, leadoff guys on, um, and then I just battled back. And with this heat, I mean, I was getting tired early on in the game. And uh, I'd come in the dugout and sit in the shade and get it together. And, you know, towards the middle, towards the end of the game, I started getting in a rhythm, started getting leadoff guys out, and start to start, pretty much started cruising after that. <laughs> you know, we talk about that a lot, that, that and, and you keep playing until you hear timeout called. Uh, and, and I never heard timeout called. They never heard it acknowledged by an umpire. So heads up play by Brandon, that kind of ignited us offensively, and it kind of gave Dylan a little bit of second life in that game, too. The Tigers will celebrate and then rest up so they are ready to take on the tournament undefeated one seed Houston on Saturday. We play Houston tomorrow. we got to win two. Um, we're just going to take it day by day, game by game, and we're going to grind. We're going to grind. We're going to try to get it done. So I believe in us. Well, you know, I, we're going in with momentum, and, and they're going in with a day off. So uh, sometimes that, that plays to benefit. And I think our guys are playing pretty free and pretty easy and pretty loose now, so we'll see what happens. In order for Memphis to make it to the championship game on Sunday, they'll have to beat Houston twice on Saturday. First pitch is set for 10 a.m. Eastern on the American Digital Network. If Houston wins it, the Cougars move to the finals, eliminating Memphis. But if the Tigers can pull out a win, they'll take on Houston again at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Winner of that one will go to the championship game. Memphis took two of three from Houston earlier this season. If game one wasn't crazy enough, it was followed up by another late UConn surge, this time against Tulane. The Huskies refusing to lose in elimination games. UConn trailed 6-2 through seven innings, but five runs in the eighth would eliminate the Green Wave from the tournament. Joe DeRoche Duffin's two-run home run to left field couldn't have come at a much more clutch time for the blue and white. Uh, he, you know, I've been giving him a hard time because he hasn't hit with runners in scoring position. If we get a guy to second base, it's like an automatic pop-up late. But no, he he crushed that ball. And I like when he gets the two strikes, and it seems strange, but he shortens up his swing and he just tries to get the barrel to it, and he's so darn strong. Um, you know, when he hits it, it goes. And uh, I, we had a, a dugout of real happy guys, and I was glad I didn't take Bobby Melly out. I'm thinking, how's he going to score on a single? But Joe doesn't hit many singles, so... Uh, thankfully, uh, nobody was going to catch the one that he hit, and that was a big moment for us. Well, he threw he threw me a he left a curveball up first pitch, and I wasn't looking for it. I thought I was going to get a fastball because I'd gotten all day, um, and then he just uh, just got into battle mode after that, and saw the same exact pitch as the first one, and just uh, put a good swing on. It. And even though the Huskies were about as close as they could get to elimination, the dugout never stopped believing. But we're we're a tough group of guys. We're talented. We're deep. We're tough and. We showed that yesterday. We finally got something in the extra innings. We finally did it. And with that, <laughs> we're, able, we're able to just uh, keep everything rolling. Well, you know, it, it's, it's certainly, they know that they can do it. They know they can win one run games, and we hadn't done it in five, six weeks. And, and uh, you know, back to back days, we've done it. And last time we were here and won, we, I think we had to win four one run games just to get to the final on Sunday. So uh, like, it's nice to see the Huskies finally made it to Clearwater and we're playing like. Uh, like UConn Huskies finally. It's good for the coach's hairline too. UConn will have to take it one game at a time to make it to Sunday. Up next, they'll meet the two seed East Carolina. Back in April when these two squads met, the series was tied at one, but the Pirates would win the final game on Sunday in extra innings. Oh, well, we're, we're, we got our backs up against the wall every day and uh, that just brings more out of us. And we're not leaving, I'll tell you that. We'll see you on Sunday, but 
Uh, it's, 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 we're going to be there. Yeah, they're very good. They're very good. And I tell the guys all the time, you got to now, we'll go back, relax a little bit when the sun goes down. It's got, this one has to be over with. And we got to transition to kind of prepare, you prepare your bodies for two games and you got to prepare your minds for one. You can't think about two. You got to think about one. And, and, uh, and that first pitch tomorrow is a big one. And, and the one after that's the biggest pitch they're going to see. So you just, you got to play, play the game like that. It's a cliche, but it's true. And, and hopefully the guys can separate and just stay in the moment like they've been doing. You know, you said uh, everybody thought we were leaving. Uh, I don't think anybody in our dugout or on the field thought they were leaving that we're in the white uniforms. And that's all that really matters at this stage of the year. The Huskies and the Pirates will play at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday right here at Bright House Field. If East Carolina wins, the Pirates will head to the final. If UConn wins, they'll play again later in the evening. Winner of that game would head to the championship. Just four teams left in the tournament fighting for the American title and an automatic bid to an NCAA regional. The final game is set for Sunday at noon Eastern time on ESPNU. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Allen.